a PowerPoint for this uh, uh, preaching today, but maybe it's not uh, the will of God for me to, to use PowerPoint. Why? Because sometimes we we we, uh, we we look so much in the technology that whenever we don't have it, we cannot preach the word of God. Amen. Amen. But you know what? I will explain to you three major reasons why Jesus came to earth. Maybe you will you will uh, you'll see that maybe Jesus just came to earth because. Uh, you want to die for us at the cross. Maybe we'll say that because we are sinners, you need to come to rescue us from, from our sins. But I will tell you very important uh, reasons. This is what is behind all these things. Why Jesus came to earth. And, you know, when you say the literal earth, this is the world we are living now. And this is the earth that belongs to the solar system, right? There's a solar system, and the center of the solar system is the sun. And there are planets orbiting in the direct and, uh, you know, uh, complete access to the sun, and they never collide with each other. We have a solar system. And you know what? Before, if you will zoom out, the solar system, is also inside of what we call a galaxy. In a galaxy, we call it the Milky Way. So in a galaxy, there is also what we call solar systems inside a galaxy. It's only, it's, only, uh, it's only not one solar system. And you know, if you will zoom out and you will look in a bigger picture, you know, this is the perception of our God. This is the level of His perception. You can see a universe and there are, there, there are lots of solar systems in that universe. So you can you imagine how wide is the perception of our God? Amen? Amen. Can you imagine you are in the universe the Bible says that the universe is very wide. It's everlasting from infinity to infinity. And you know what happened? God created the universe. And also, God created the earth. Where? He created man. Okay, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Before we will read you know, the word of God, I will explain to you that in this world there are only two kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. The kingdom that belongs to Satan and the kingdom that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is our coming king. He's already our king in our lives. Right now, he's reigning in the spiritual realm. But also he will reign in the physical realm. Why? Because Jesus Christ is right now seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. But one day it will come that He will reign in this world along with all the brothers and sisters who accepted Him as a personal Lord and Savior. So if you don't belong to the kingdom of God, you belong to the kingdom of the devil. You cannot be at the center. It's either you choose to be in the kingdom of God and you choose to be in the kingdom of darkness. There is no in between. Amen. So we have to be clear on this. And the only way for, for us, for you, to be in the kingdom of God is when you receive Him, when you believe in Him, when you accepted Him in your life as your personal Lord and Savior. If you have that faith in Him, this is the only way in order to be in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So I believe all of us already believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Raise your hands. All of us, right? Even if you're Catholic, or you're a Methodist, or Episcopal, or, a, or any, anybody, but if you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have already accepted Him in your life as a personal Lord and Savior, 
you belong to the kingdom of God. Amen. So we will be studying this subject in this church. Because as I already told you before, I preached like in uh, August, maybe August 16 or August 23, I preached about the new heaven and new earth. That the Christians, the people of God, they will live at, in the new heaven, no, in the new earth, while well, God will live in the new heavens. Because God lives in heaven, He inhabits the heavens. And the Bible says, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So Jesus Christ is fully man, fully God. Why? Because He became man. And that's why Jesus Christ will reign with us in the new earth. Then the new Jerusalem will come and it will settle on earth. Amen? And the new Jerusalem it is the, it's the, like the, uh, the picture of heaven. Because the streets are gold, the walls are made of jasper, uh, the walls are made of gems. So Jesus Christ will reign in this world forever and ever and ever. Amen. And it's glad, I'm glad that you belong, that we belong in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you'll reign with Satan forever and ever and ever also. And hell, tormented day and night with the lake of fire. So you have to choose. You cannot be in the same kingdom at the same time. You have to choose where, what kingdom you belong. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to be clear with that, that we belong in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, three reasons. This is a big three reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth. Number one, because of His integrity. Because of the integrity of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Okay? You see what is written here? Then God said, I'll put the, this one here. Then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion. Over all the fish of the of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. If you summarize it, let them have dominion over all the earth. Amen. The Bible says, God says, let them have dominion over all the earth. Here God is releasing the word. He's the one talking. And you know what? God is already stuck or trapped in his word. While when the Lord will say something, he will see to it that he will stand that something that he already said. That is his integrity. Amen. And in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3, the Bible says, "One cried to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy. What is this holiness that is mentioned here? You know, the angels shouted, Holy, 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 Jehovah of hosts. You know, these three holiness, holy, holy, holy. This is not only one holiness, this is tribal holiness. This belongs to God. That it's, it uh, means that faithful, faithful, faithful. The Lord is faithful to His promises. The Lord is faithful. He is pure in love. He is pure in His motive. You know, when, when, uh, when God said that let Him have dominion over all the earth, He means that let Him, let him have dominion. You know, God says, let Him have dominion. He didn't say that. Let us have dominion. This is the word of God. It is very clear. Let them who? The people. The human being. Let them have dominion over, over all the earth. You know, God took himself in that situation. Umanis siya sa sitwasyon na yan. 
and he put man in charge of all the earth. This is very clear. Let them have dominion over all. Sabi na, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the, of the old earth, and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. It's very clear that the man that he created, he gave them the authority to have dominion over all the earth. God is not telling them, okay, I created the man, okay, and I'm God, and let us have dominion over all the earth. No. The Bible says very clearly, let them have dominion over all the earth. So, maybe it shocks you that God put all this responsibility on you now as a human being. And you know what happens down here? God lays everything in our feet. And God made us responsible for our own future in this world. You know, we as human, human beings, we are human beings, we will dominate the earth. This is the plan and this is the command of God. And in His integrity. Let us understand first what is human being. Human being is composed of three. He has a spirit, he has a soul, and a body. Right? Because God is a tripartite being also. We have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God, the Lord said, let us make man in our own image. So the image of God is composed of three persons. So He created us into a tripartite being. We are composed of three. Spirit, soul, and a body. And so the human being will dominate the earth. And God said to human, you are the one who has legal authority to dominate the planet earth. You have the legal authority to dominate the planet earth. And if somebody wants to dominate the planet earth, he needs to have a body. That is why the devil is a spirit. He cannot dominate the earth because he has no legal authority to dominate the earth. God created man. He created him and he gave life. And his soul was there. And he gave the spirit. And he is legal on earth because he has a body. And you know what happened? It is the word of God. And God cannot break his word. Because He is too holy. God is too holy to break every promise or any of His promises. Now the devil is a spirit, as I told you already. And maybe God told them, maybe God told the devil that, you know, if you want to, to stay on earth, you need to have a body. For you to be legally illegal, illegally legal on earth, you need to have a body. So you know what that devil did? He went to the serpent. Now the serpent is an animal. I believe the animal has no soul and spirit. They have body. They have life. Then he negotiated the serpent. You know serpent, I want to be legal on earth. I need your body. The serpent agreed. So what happened? The serp uh, Satan was inside that serpent. And what happened? The serpent negotiated with that woman. And you know, who is that woman? If the serpent, the Satan through the serpent, now he has a body. Now he can be legal, but he's illegal. Why? Because it is not his body, he's only borrowing that body from the serpent. And then he could negotiate it with the woman. And he told the woman, no, you will not die. Because the Bible says, God said to the woman, do not eat of the tree, the fruit of the tree of life, of, of uh, nice food and evil. Because if once you will eat it, you will die. Then the snake, no, the, the serpent negotiated with her. And he told her, no, you will not die. 
Just try it. You will not die. God is lying to you. When you eat this, this uh, fruit, you will know everything. So you know what happened. Yeah? But, uh, it follows the history of mankind. He fell. Amen? Amen. The mankind fell. And you know, after that, God cursed the serpent. You know that in the back in the days, the serpent had legs. And I saw, you know, I, I have the PowerPoint, I will show you that the serpent has a limb. It's like a, you know, a, a leg of a human being. But because God cursed the serpent, that leg did not develop. It returned, it stays inside. If you, can, if you want to see, I have here the picture. If you want to come, I will show you later on. That the snake, they have legs. But because they were cursed by God, that legs did not need to move. Because he, God cursed that serpent to be a creeping creature and he will eat the dust of the field. Amen? You, you, you get what I mean? Yes. Praise the Lord. So, Satan to the snake. Went to the woman who is legal. When Satan is legally legal, and because now he has a body, he already negotiated with the woman, and the woman believed in him. What happened? They disobeyed God, and now the Spirit of God cannot dwell in that body of human. You know what happened? When, when God created human being, the Spirit of God is in him. He is perfect. He is pure before the eyes of God. But because iniquity came, the man died. He did not die physically. The spirit died. Death of the spirit is not the spirit of God died. No. This is what we call separation. When they committed the sin of disobedience, the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? It's no longer found. That is why God cursed the earth. And the earth, you know, the sickness came to earth, all this uh, devastation came to earth, all these curses came to earth, and people will work in order for him to live. And the woman, she will labor in pain before, they will, before a baby boy or a baby girl will come out. It's just a curse because of disobedience. And what happened? Because of that unholy condition, impure condition of man, God's word is no longer kept in their hearts, and God made a promise. After the fall, God made a promise. You know what is the promise of God? He promised it. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, this is the promise of the Lord. Now, after that, Eve committed this, and he gave also some to, his, to her husband, and they both fell. And there is a promise that God mentioned for, for, uh, for a serpent, for Satan, and also to restore humanity back into him. I will tell you, Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put. This is the verse. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your sin and her sin. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. You know what he's talking about? This is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a promise. You know, God is a spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, God can break into the world, to, into this earth, without a body. You know what he said? And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your sin and her sin. And between, and he will brush your head and use a bruise to seal. You know, this, this uh, prophecy happened in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. The serpent 
bruised the heel of Jesus Christ and he died. But later on, after dying on the cross, Jesus Christ risen from the dead. And this is the time that he bruised the head of the serpent. Amen? Amen. And there's an enmity. But before Jesus Christ came, there is a negotiation happen. Because, you know, Satan knew that he cannot follow him. Because God has an integrity. He said to man, I will give dominion over you to rule over the earth. So God cannot break in his word. He cannot just come to this earth and do something and restore the, the world. No, he need to have I don't know, a process, what we call process. Because of God's integrity. And maybe he said to Satan, you know Satan, you know that I cannot come now. Because I have no body. I have no physical body. Now he speaks about the woman. He's speaking about the woman. Who is this woman? The same woman. He used the woman. You know, Satan used the woman to, to make the man fell from glory into sin, into sin. And now God will use another woman to bring back the glory that's being stolen by the enemy back into glory. Amen. You know, he, he speak about the woman. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Now it's not the same woman, but this is about you know the womanhood that God used here. So, but the woman that you have uh, that you have used to destroy me, he will provide for me a physical body, then I will destroy you. This is the, the message of the Lord. Right here in this verse. And you, and between you and the woman, and between your sin and her sin. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his head. You will see. The Lord God mentioned to the serpent, to, to, to Satan, that I will come in physically. I will dwell in man physically with a body. And I will have a body that will make you legal. And I will use that legal state of mind to crush your head legally. Because I have a body. And I will take back the power that you stole from man legally. And I will return that power into the man that you stole it legally. And I will surely do it. Because I do not have authority on earth as the, at the moment. But I will do it in the future. When the fullness of time comes, I will do it in the future. That is why in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, After his death, and he was buried, and after he was buried after three days, what happened? He rose again. When he rose again, he said that all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. See now, it speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was on earth, he has his authority already. Why? Because he is legally restoring, redeeming what has been destroyed by the enemy legally okay so Jesus declared that when, when he rose again all authority is given to him not only in heaven but also on earth in heaven he is a spirit but on earth he has a body that's why he crucified him on the cross because he is legally king on earth and that is the integrity of God. No, He will not just, if you have committed one mistake, 
and you have to suffer a lot of consequences. The Lord will not just wrong. That's wrong. Okay, erase, erase, erase. If I can make a mistake in my computer, what I will do? Undo. Undo, undo, undo. Delete, delete, delete. But God has an identity. He will not make shortcuts. He will not, we need, we, we can't make any mistake. He will not undo it or remove it. Control, delete, no. There is a what we call process. Because God has an identity. Because of the integrity of God. And you know what happened? God cannot break into man. Otherwise, he will break his own word. Because he said that let him have dominion over all the earth. And God does going to earth. No, he will not do it. He will break his word. He will break his own promises, his pronouncement. God cannot do that. He can break his own word. That's why he came. God's holiness, God's integrity caused him to come personally. Legally. Not illegally legal. You know, if you are illegal, you don't have authority. You know that? If you are in the United Arab Emirates and you're illegal, you don't have Emirates ID, you don't have medical card, you cannot go to the hospital. You can go, but you have to pay. And if the police will catch you, you don't have Emirates ID, he will bring you to the jail. That is why if you want to go to a certain place, if I go to the, to the USA, I need to have a passport. I need to have a visa that is approved by the government. Otherwise, I am illegal. And I don't have authority. If you're illegal, you don't have authority. You don't have the power. That is why the Lord who wanted to rescue man legally in order for him to give back the power that the enemy had stolen from him legally back into the man. To rule over the earth again. To have dominion all over the earth again. You know, there is a miracle in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. God needs a body so He can dwell on earth. He needs a body so that He can dwell on earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. But He cannot live or He cannot dwell in man because He's holy. If God will come to me right now and dwell in me, if I am not a Christian or I'm not a born again Christian, He cannot dwell in me. Why? Because I am sinful. My life is filled with filthiness. God cannot, cannot stay in a place where, he's not, where uh, there's no holiness. He cannot dwell in man. He cannot come to me and, Pastor Jules, I can use your body. I need to be legally. Uh, a person in honor. No. Hindi pwede. That is why God came as a baby. He came as a baby. And He needs a miracle. You know what? In uh, the devil, you know, he's trying to destroy uh, you know, when, when the Lord Jesus Christ came on earth, that there was a decree before that all babies from zero to two years old will be slain but to kill all the babies. You say, he is afraid. He's so afraid that the Lord Jesus Christ will come as a man legally because he thought that he can hinder what is being planned by the Lord Jesus Christ, by God, in order for the redemption of man. You know, the man, the order to kill all the babies, they want to kill them so that the, the Messiah will not be born, he will not grow if, if he dies. And you know what happened in Genesis uh, chapter 3 verse 15, this is uh, the woman, again, that is used by the serpent, the same woman, womanhood, I mean, that will be used by God in order to redeem 
what has been destroyed by the devil. God told the devil, you know, the woman is your worst nightmare. The woman, take care of that woman. Be careful with, it, with her. Because she will be your worst nightmare. You use him to destroy my creation, and I will use her also to restore what I've destroyed. And the woman will be your worst nightmare. Be the worst nightmare. You know, enmity is not enemy. You know, enmity is not enemy of the woman, you know. It's not any enemy. It means that there is an irreconcilable hostility between the two. There will never be an agreement between the woman and the serpent. There will never be an agreement. And what happened? The design that God made for the woman, it will never ever change. God already designed the woman. When He created the woman, God designed her in the future that God may use the woman in order for Him to be born. Before God created the woman, he already designed the woman for her to carry a baby that doesn't mix with her blood. If you're a doctor, I know that you know this, that the baby inside the womb is not mixing with the blood of the mother. There is always a placenta. What do you call it placenta? And you know, the umb umbilical cord will go to the placenta and receive nutrients, food from the mother, but through diffusion. The blood of the mother arrives to the placenta and everything will be diffused. Meaning it's like an evaporation, there's no blood. Then the baby will receive from the umbilical cord the nutrients, everything that the mother has for the support of life. But the blood will never, never mix. That is why there, is, there was a question before that if the woman or the mother has an AIDS, is it possible for the baby to have AIDS also? The question is no. It is not possible. Even if the woman or the mother has been infected with AIDS, the baby inside is safe. The reserve the blood will never mix. So meaning, when God created the woman, He's thinking about Himself already. He knows what will happen in the future. In case there will be a problem, I already designed the woman to carry a baby that is pure God. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't mix with the human being. Amen? Amen. He is God. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. It is not conceived by the blood of the mother and the father. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, put it inside the womb of the Virgin Mary. She was a virgin. And that is why when the Lord Jesus Christ came to her, He was sinless without a trace of sin, without a trace of any maliciousness or anything. God and Jesus Christ is perfectly human. No trace of sin. Amen. Amen. Now you understand that Jesus Christ came as a perfect man in order for him to be a perfect offering. I can I can volunteer, Lord, I go to the cross, let me hang there, crucify me, then I will pay all the, the sins of the world. Then the, the, God will say, you are not worthy. I need a perfect offering. You can't pay. You are not qualified. Why? You are not, you know, in the back of the Bible, you know, when you, when you go back to the Old Testament, 
when the priest will bring, you know, the people of Israel, if they want to, to offer sacrifices for the Lord, you know, the lamb that will bring should be perfect. As white as wool, perfect, without blemishes. Then they will offer this offering to God. Then they will, the priest will kill it, and then they will burn it in the burnt offering uh, pan, and then, then the aroma of this smoke of the offering will reach God, and God will, will bless them. Because their offering is perfect. This is the same with the Lord Jesus Christ. His offering is perfect. He is the only Lamb of God that is being offered perfectly in order to make a perfect atonement, in order to make a complete work. Otherwise, the work of God is useless. Why? It's not perfect. But because God is perfect, sinless, inside the womb of the woman, he was not being, uh, you know, he was not mixed with the blood of human being. And then he grew as a man. When you see the Bible in Isaiah, you know, when you see Jesus, you don't desire of Him. Meaning, if, if, if a lady will look at Him, she will have no desire for Him, to lay with Him. This is Jesus. You cannot feel anything desire fleshly with Jesus Christ. Why? Because He's God. And there is holiness in Him. Amen. That's the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's very, very special when God created Him to be a special offering for you and for me. Amen. And that is the integrity of God. He need to go through with all the process. Not no shortcuts. He cannot make Shortcuts. Why? Because of his integrity. If God will not do it, if God will not do you know, the process, then he will break his word. And if he break his word, he is no longer God. Because God is perfect. No error. He needs to accomplish something in the process. Amen? And that is the integrity of God. You know, when, when God created the woman, He knew already that He would die. This is very deep. When, when God created the world, and He created the universe, He created the human being, He created you and me, God already knew that He will die. Let's look at this verse. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. If you don't believe, I will tell you. Did really pastor? Or God only did die before the foundation of the world? Of course. Because he knew it. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. Okay? For you have believed, do enter that rest. As he has said, so I swear in my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. This, this verse was explained to you by Pastor Nicholas time. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, God already knew what would happen. He thought about, He planned everything before it happened. And before the world began, God already plan his atonement, you know, his redemption. And I am here to declare also that even before the world began, God already knew you personally. Yeah. And you are so special in the, in the eyes of God. Yes. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Let us continue. And also, as, a, as another verse, let us open Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. You know that God, Jesus Christ was slain before He died? Before He, uh, before he was born? Bago pa siya pinanganap, He already was slain. Told Him He died. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. And who dwell on the earth will worship Him, whose names have not been written in the book 
of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It's like God is saying, I created this woman, I created a way in case there is mistake. I already created and prepared everything. Even before I was born, I already died. I am just waiting to be born to die. This is the integrity of God. It's so deep that you cannot understand it. But I will try my best to, to explain to you. So it's already there. Even from the foundation of the world. And you know what? Ito pang matindi. God already ordained you to be in Christ even before the world began. Even before the foundation of the world, the Lord ordained you to be in Christ. That's how special you are. Then you know, if you are hopeless, if you are telling pastor, my life is boring. I'm so bored. My life is no longer happy. I don't enjoy fellowship. My life is already, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I'm already finished. Some people are doing like that. But if you know that God already, before He created you, He already planned for you to save you from your sins. And He's the one who orchestrated everything. He is a master planner of your life. You know, you don't know the blueprint. You don't know it. You don't know that sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down. Sometimes you fall, sometimes you are happy, sometimes you are sad. But at the end, you are still blessed. Why? Because God already chosen you from the foundation of the world. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Number two. So we have still time. I will go very fast. Number two. Number two reason why God, Jesus Christ came to earth is because of the justice of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 17, justice belongs to the Lord. In Psalms 37 verse 28, for the Lord loves justice. In Psalms 9 verse 16, the Lord is known for His justice. So justice is very, very serious. Justice is equal to the holiness of God. That is why when the man, when man fell and he committed sin, God cannot just forget the sins like that in a quick, in a, you know, in a blink of an eye. No, no, forget, forget. No, no, no. No. It should be paid. If you stole something and you, there's no people around you and you stole something and put it in your pocket like, you know, a jewelry or anything and then the CCTV look at uh, coverage is there and you go to jail. That is your use. You will not go and punish. This is God. No, the sin of man caused God to punish him because of his justice. God cannot just, okay, uh, okay, no problem, no problem, just go, go, go. No. God will punish the sin. Not a single spot of sin will remain. He will punish everything. So God will punish me? Yes. Unless there will be somebody who will be punished for you. Unless there is someone who took your sins in his body and went to the cross and punished by God until all the justice of God has been paid fully by the Lord Jesus Christ. We can go there and pay our, our sins, but we cannot pay all of it. That is why Jesus came in order to satisfy the justice of God. In order to satisfy a full payment of all the sins that you ever committed in the past. 
the sins that you are planning to commit and the sins that you are committing in the future and the sins that you don't know God already forgiven them paid in full once and for all because of the Lord Jesus Christ let's say in one person there are many things that you have done who will pay for it? do you want to pay your sins? go to go to the, the, the cross and pay for you and then after that you go to the cross have yourself there for three hours six hours and after that you go and commit sin again and after that after one year you go to the cross again and pay your sin no God through the Lord Jesus Christ already pay your sins once and for all That is why he cried out at the cross, It is finished! Yes. Everything is paid in full! Amen? Look at the end of the time. Yes. Are we happy? Are you not happy that your sins have been forgiven? Happy. But sometimes I'm doubting. So I doubt. You know, the doubt is used by the devil. It will make you think that you are still a sinner. It will keep your your mind always remembering your sins, right? Lagi mo na lang ano yung kasi kawa yung magawa niya. You know when the Lord said, the Lord said in the Bible that He will forgive all your unrighteousnesses. He will remember no more. So God will not record your sins. The tape recording, you already thrown it. The CD already destroyed. But somebody is keeping the CD, the copy. He copied the CD and put it for himself. And then he will play it again and again and again. Again and again and again. For you to remember your sins. And this is the devil. He's doing this to destroy you. In order for, for you not to soar high with God. Because you always, Lord, ito yung makasalanan ko ang dami. But I tell you, when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ and you confess all your sins, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I repented from all my sins. From today, Lord, I surrender all to you. The moment you said that, God will forgive you. Not only forgiveness, but God will justify you. What is justification? Justification is forgiveness and never, never remembering your sin as if you don't commit that sin and you forget it that's God you will forget all your sins as far as this is from the west He removes your transgressions from you and you will never ever remember it somebody is reminding you and that is a given Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord The justice of God So let us understand this God is holy He is not, he is not, uh, he is not having holiness. He is not just having holiness in order to for it to be holy. But God is holiness itself. If you speak about holiness, that is God. He is holiness. That is His nature, holy. And God cannot lie because of His integrity, because of His Uh, of his, uh, you know, being the holiness because of his uh, being faithful, God cannot lie, and because he is holy, whatever he says, he has to make sure it's done because of his holiness. And let us understand this: that God created man and put him in the garden, and God says to him, "Work, cultivate this garden, replenish the earth, protect, subdue." And then God says to him, "But don't eat from that tree. You know, in the garden everything was good, but there's only one thing that's not good. Do not eat from the tree of good, of the knowledge of good and evil. And the day that you will eat it, you will surely die. And that is the promise of God. God says, look." If you disobey me, you will surely die. Death will.
will come if you disobey me. That is the word of God. That is not the word of the devil. Sometimes we, you know, kasana na nataaw ng nagre. You know, this is the sin of the, this is the call of the, the devil. So that we know when you blame the devil, even the devil was, you will blame your himself. But don't blame me. I was killed also. I was kicked out from heaven. And you know what happened? God told man, if you disobey me, you will surely die. Death will come if you will disobey me. This is not his word for you and for me. This word is for himself. He is telling himself, if man will disobey me, I will surely kill him. Sometimes you are shocked. What? Really? But this is the word of the Lord. If you surely disobey me, if you will disobey my word, you will surely. But it means sure. And we'll make it sure, God will make it sure that you will die. That is why when Adam and Eve received the fruit, they died. Namatay sila. Not physically, but they died spiritually. And you have to die if you break His word. And that is the promise of God to Himself. This is not a promise to you. He did not say that if you, if you put this baby, you will surely die. He's not telling it for you. He is telling it to himself that in case you will disobey me, I will see to it that you will die. Because of God's justice. This is the justice of God. He will see to it. Now, if God will do that, God is holy still. Why? Because you disobey. Sometimes you see sinati ng Panginoon. So, Lord, why, why a lot of consequences in my life? Bakit maraming mga consequences? Bakit maraming problema dumadating? Don't you know that sometimes the cause of your problem, that the cause of uh, the consequences are the problems that you have created for yourself? And then, sinisisi natin ang Panginoon. First of all, alam mo na mali, din ginawa mo. Then, may consequences. Then, because of that consequences, you blame God. No, God is God. When God will punish you because of your consequences of your sins, He is still holy. Because God is a just God. Amen. Walang makakalusot sa Panginoon. He will punish. God must be faithful to Himself. That is why He has to kill us to make sure He is still God. To make sure that His godly nature remains in Him. Now we must understand that the integrity of God and God is just also. The justice of God is the manifestation of His holiness. Whatever you will do, you will read. This is the, the, the principle. It's not because God does not love you already. It's not because God does not care for you. But because of God's justice, He need to do it. Kailangan yung gawin yun. Kailangan gawin ng Panginoon. So when God told you that you will die, and He don't want you to die, then somebody must die. That's why in Romans chapter, in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, but he was wounded, it speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ, but he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, yet it pleased the Lord to destroy him, to break him, it pleased the Lord. You know what, what happened? All our iniquities, all the iniquities of the world was put upon the body of that baby. And that baby grew. 
after 33 years old. And one day, he will pay for that sin. All the sins of the world, in order to satisfy the justice of God, he need to die. Because of that, all our sins was put into the body. And God died, and Jesus Christ died as a man. He offered himself as an offering at the cross for the propitiation of your sins. You know, the iniquities of us all was upon him. The Bible says, You displease the Lord to bruise him, he had put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his sin, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. You know, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Not to bruise or to, you know, when, when, when you're bruised or destroyed, you are broken. Yet it pleased the Lord. You know, who, who, who bruised him? God. He, he did not pay anything to Satan. Hindi niyo sinabi na, Satan, no, I will pay, I will pay, I will pay everything for you. No. The payment that the Lord Jesus Christ paid is for the payment to satisfy the justice of God. In order for God to have the peace in His heart that He is still God. Pag hindi ginawa niyo ng Panginoon, napangusahan niya ang kanyang anak or to, to destroy His own self, then he, not, he will not satisfy Himself. This is for the satisfaction of the justice of God in order for Him to call Himself God still. Amen. Amen. Lastly, this is very fast. The third reason why Jesus came to earth because of the love of God. God is love. Again, this is not something that He has, but God is love. God equals love. Love is God, and God is love. This is the nature of God. He has also to do what He says because love never fails. Right? Amen. The Bible says, God's love, agape love, never fails. It will not, not fail. So what He says He will do in order for Him to satisfy, you know, the, the, the thing that He says, that love never fails. And God love you even to death, even by dying on the cross. And God has a decision to make. You know, that day we sin, the Holy Spirit, as I told you already, left to us, from us. But when Jesus died for us, we have the provision to be alive again because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are saved, God will give us the Spirit. And that is what we call being born again. Right? If you receive the Lord Jesus Christ today, you will be born again. It's the moment you sin before, when you are not yet believing God, you, are, you die. You die spiritually. But when you become born again, this being born again is not, is, is not a religion. In John 3, 3, it is being born again, meaning there will be a spiritual birth. Because you die when, when Adam and Eve died. And you inherited everything, all the sins of the nature of them, we inherited. But as long as we have, uh, we, 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 we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, then God will give us a spirit for us to live again in our spirit. Romans 6.53, for the wages of sin is death. Ang kabayaran, kasalanan ay kamatayan. But it follows the promise of God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. Di ba tayo masaya na mayroong nag-rescue sa atin kung nasa kasalanan natin? And because of the love of God. Now in conclusion, if you are thinking that you really love the Lord and you understand what He has already done, I think there are two things that you will never understand. These two things that God did, this action that He did, you'll never understand in the sight of the glory of God. And I will tell you this too. Number one, you will never understand what God felt when he was apart from himself. And that is because of you. 
God left himself for you. Imagine how to feel it when you are not yourself and you need to go and you need to leave yourself as a guy. How does it feel? You don't understand it. Why has God forsaken me? That is what the Lord says. My God, my God, why has God forsaken me? You know, yan yung feeling na wala ka na kakampi. Di ba pag binanto ka tapos hindi mo masaya rin? Ano may yari sa'yo? Grabe naman ito, hindi mo na ko sa ere. Di ba? Napakasakit. Sabi ng Panginoon, this is the greatest cry of the Lord Jesus Christ. This greatest cry and everything felt. You know, the, the pain inside his heart. This is the pain. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It is very painful when you forsake yourself. When you deny yourself and you forsake it, it's very painful. You know, He did the same the Lord Jesus Christ. In the garden, God forsaken us. Right? When you committed that simple and one for all sin of disobedience, God left. The same what happened to Jesus Christ. He did it to Jesus Christ also. In order for you to return to the original state that God prepared for you and me. So you will never understand what God feels when He denied Himself. Number two, when He became man, you know, when God became man, and this man is Jesus Christ, He knew that He could never be the way again He was before. He will always be a man. Do you believe that? You know, Jesus Christ right now, seated at the right hand of God as a man. Shocking, diba? Pero pastor, Jesus Christ is God. Yes, Jesus Christ is God. But because of you and me, because of me, because of you, because of my sins, because of your sins, even today, today, right now, in heaven, God, Jesus Christ, is stuck, trapped in man's body. Why? He became man. And he can never be, he can never uh, withdraw from that, that, that reason or the fact that he is a man. Perfect man. He became a man. The Bible says, for this only one mediator between God and man. And this is the man, Jesus Christ. Now right now, Jesus Christ is interceding. Father, I intercede for my, my fellow man. Who is right now on earth. You know, don't you know that Jesus Christ is the first born from the dead? He was the first man who resurrected. Amen? Amen. 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 You believe in that? Amen. Because of His resurrection, we will also resurrect. That's the truth. That's why Jesus Christ right now, is the man who is in Christ. That Jesus Christ is a man. Yes, of course He's a man. He was a cat trapped in the man's body because of you, because of my sins. You caused Him to come to earth. Because of his love for you, because of his justice, because of his integrity, you caused him to live his godly, you know, the godliness, you know, the, the, the glory in heaven, and came to earth in order to rescue you. Did you know Did you know that? Did you know that? Ikaw ang dahilan kung bakit naparito si Jesus Christ na hindi naman sana sa kapat nandito. And forever, He is struck in the body of man. And you cause Him to reign this earth. He is God. But he, you cause Him to reign this world, to reign this earth, planet earth. That's why He came to earth. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. 
John 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. This is His Christ. In verse 14, and the Word, this is His Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ was there in the beginning. He was with, the, with God. He was with the Father. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Yet, He is fully God. He is fully man. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish at the hand of everlasting life. And you cause Him to do these things because of your sin and because of my sins.